Hello everybody, my name is Kelly May and I am the Marketing and Design Specialist here at the McCormick Center. Um, today I'll be giving you some valuable tips and tricks so that you can use social media in order to build your early childhood brand. Um, I'm going to be recording this webinar as well um, and hopefully we'll be able to get this up shortly afterwards um, and I'll email everybody a link to it so you can take a look at it later. So don't worry if I say something and you're not able to write it down, um, I'll be getting that to you as soon as I can. So um, I also want to remind those in Illinois that if you're taking this for Gateways credit, you have to be present the whole um, webinar in order to receive that. Um, you'll be receiving more information about that um, afterwards from our event coordinator, Marlene Barrett. Um, and I know if you're still um, hopping into the webinar right now, feel free to go into the chat and tell me where you're watching from. I love seeing that stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you guys, if you're watching this webinar, you're probably familiar with the McCormick Center, but um, really quick, our mission is to empower early childhood professionals to build the leadership skills that they need to create and sustain programs for young children. Um, we offer professional development opportunities, evaluation, research, and public awareness, and we promote program administration best practices. So um, we work with states, professional organizations, and directly with early childhood practitioners in order to raise the bar on program quality. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about our programs and services, you can visit our website. I put the URL at the bottom. It's mccormickcenter.nl.edu. And if you love today's webinar and want to hear more about content and events like this, um, please also sign up for our email list as well. You can find that on our website. And one more thing, um, I want to let you guys know that I'll be presenting about digital marketing um, with my colleague Patrick Small this year at Leadership Connections in May. Um, and at this conference, I'll be giving a, a deeper dive into branding and Patrick will also teach you more things about how you can build a website that'll work for your organization. Um, and Leadership Connections is hosted every year. It's 45 minutes outside of Chicago. So if you've never been there, it's a great opportunity to go to a conference and go see the city. Um, it's in Wheeling, Illinois. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about that and register, you can go to the URL at the bottom. It's mccormickcenter.nl.edu slash leadership connections. So to get started, um, we're going to, I'm going to define for you social media. I'm sure uh, most of you use social media on a daily basis, um, but I just want to make sure that it's clear. So social media is a website or app that allows its users to share content and interact with friends and families and colleagues. Um, some of these include Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. And today I'm going to primarily talk about Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So uh, I'm also going to talk about the phrase engagement quite a bit throughout the presentation. So I want to make sure that you know what I mean by that. And I define engagement as the ways in which your audience interacts with your posts on social media. So this includes likes, comments, shares, reach, and reach is how many people saw your post, whether they commented, liked, or shared or not. Um, so how can social media help you? You probably interact with brands and pages that you like on Facebook, but if you've ever tried to grow your organization's account, you might've felt overwhelmed or unsure where to start. Well, when used correctly, social media can help your organization reach a wider audience. Um, you can connect with your base, share important updates and information, answer questions, and give users access to your information 24-7, much like a website. All right, so today, um, here's our agenda. I'm going to talk to you about branding, um, strategy, content creation, and scheduling. Uh, which are the core things you need to know to be successful as, at social media. And then at the end, I'm going to show you some extra things that you can do to further boost your brand. All right, so let's jump right into it with branding. Um, I'm going to start off with this quote. Uh, it's by a pretty famous graphic designer, Paula Scher. Um, and she says, identities are the beginning of everything. They are how something is recognized and understood. So what is branding? Well, it's a system. Um, as an organization, you have your name and your logo, hopefully. 
And you might have a color scheme or fonts picked out as well that you use on your website and printed materials. Um, here you can see um, I've laid out uh, uh, how the colors and fonts from our logo on the left translate into our website and printed materials. These elements, color, imagery, shape, and the typefaces that we use combine with our voice or writing style to define our branding system. But of course, your brand isn't just on your website or print materials, it's also on social media. And it's important to use social media as an extension of your brand. Um, these are three screenshots that show you how our brand extends across all of social media. Um, we have a similar cover photo for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, our logo is used as the icon so that people immediately recognize us in their feed. Um, our posts are written in a similar voice to our website and our imagery follows the same styles we've previously set. And if you don't already have something like this set up, I would recommend doing this immediately. It will instantly make your pages look more credible um, and help reinforce your brand. Just updating your logo and cover photos can instantly make your page stand out. And um, sizing for these uh, are change pretty often. Um, which is why I didn't provide sizing for them. I would recommend um, just Googling like cover photo size for whatever social media, so like Facebook cover photo size, and then the year, so 2019, um, and that'll do the trick uh, because otherwise they change pretty quickly. And you know, um, if you're viewing this later, it could be a different dimension. <laughs> so um, another tip too that you can do is you can take a look at another brand that you might follow on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter um, and just pull the images from their page and then design on top of those. Um, you can also use tools. Um, there's one in particular called Canva um, where you can um, just choose, you know, I wanna make a Facebook cover photo and you'll be able to design on top of that. They're pre-sized for you. So a great place to start when building your brand through social media is defining your voice. And your voice is how your organization communicates with your audience. Um, you're gonna wanna decide if your brand is gonna talk formally, like you would in a professional setting, um, or informally, as you would with a friend. Um, you know, is your brand silly? Will you make occasional jokes or share content that might make people laugh? Um, or is your content more serious? Um, some other things to consider are what your social media goals are. Are you trying to reach a specific audience? Do you want to have more engagement on your content? Hopefully you do. Um, is your voice consistent? Are your print materials and website written the same way that as your social media content? And you want the answer that, to that to be yes. Um, and then finally, like, how does your voice extend to other elements of your brand? Do you use similar, similar imagery styles, colors, fonts, um, as you would on your website and other materials like flyers? So um, I'm gonna put up a checklist. Um, and like I said, I'll be sending you guys this at the end. Um, and this is just all the things that you want to make sure that you have straight away on your on your social media accounts. That's your logo as an icon um, on every account, the same fo cover photo, um, name is the same or similar on all accounts. I know like um, we try to be McCormick Center on everything, but um, we have a very common like shortening, which is M-C-E-C-L. Um, that we use occasionally when things have to be shorter, like on Twitter. Um, so we're at MCSOL, M-C-E-C-L. Um, so yeah, and all of these pieces come together to make sure that everything looks cohesive. It's very important. Okay, so that was a brief overview of branding. Um, and we're gonna talk about strategy next. But before I move on, I wanna give you guys um, a few minutes to ask me some questions if you have any about branding. So I'm gonna stop the share real quick so that I can take a look at the chat. Wow, we got a lot of, we got a, people from all different places. That's great. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any questions about branding? I'll give you guys like, a minute or so to type those into the chat and then if not we'll just keep it moving
Yes, um, the Elizabeth asked what the name of the program was that helped with the cover photos and that is Canva and I'll actually type it into the chat so you can see it's C A N V A. Um, And there's also like, uh, I know there's like pick monkey. Um, there's, I know sometimes there's apps on your phone, depending on what type of phone you have. I think, um, sometimes there's things that you can just, uh, use that are already on your phone, like a, a designer. And I think, uh, Tammy, oh, I think part of your question is missing. Oh, you're welcome, Elizabeth. Um, yes, Tammy, the slides will be shared. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm recording everything. So at the end, I'm going to send everybody an email and um, get you guys all those materials. Okay, and Danan, Danan, hopefully I'm saying your name right, um, asked, do you have any recommendations if your program's name is already taken by another business of the same name on a platform? How do you differentiate? That's a great question. Um, I would say uh, a thing that you could do is if they're not in the same like area as you, you could say, you could add like your state name. So let's say there's another McCormick Center. We could do um, McCormick Center, Illinois, or if there's two, there's actually a McCormick Place, which we get confused with sometimes. Um, so we could do, you know, McCormick Center Wheeling. Um, and I think that'll help probably differentiate um, I, that way people are, if they're looking for a location, they'll know, hey, this is the one and wherever we're looking for. And yes, Colleen, I agree. A design kit is a good app. Awesome. You're welcome, Dana. Okay. I'm going to move along, but um, I'll be stopping occasionally throughout to give you guys some time to ask questions still. So if you have any more questions, hold on to them. And the next break we have, you can ask me again. Hold on just a second. Let me get the PowerPoint back up for you guys. Okay. So like I said, we're going to talk about strategy next. And I love this quote. It says, uh, Socrates said, know thyself. And I say, know thy users. And I think this is a great segue into strategy because without users, there would be no reason to use social media. In order to better understand how to reach your audience and grow your brand, you first need to know who your audience or users are. So this is the, the technical part of the presentation, um, but I'm going to try and break it down for you guys so that it's really simple to understand and you guys can take this back and use this. So uh, the first step in strategy is research. And these are some guiding questions to help you in your information gathering. The first three questions will help you to understand who, do, who your audience is. Um, they'll inform your voice and the type of content you share. For instance, if your audience is primarily female, you might share more articles about parenting from a mother's perspective. If your audience primarily speaks Spanish, you'll want to make more content in Spanish. Um, or all of your content in Spanish, depending on what works for your particular organization. So the last two questions will help you determine your schedule and assist you in content creation. Knowing what time of day your audience posts will help you know when to post, and posting during peak times will help you get more engagement. Um, to understand what content your audience enjoys and interacts with, you're going to want to take a look at your previous posts and see what got the most engagement. For us, we get a lot of engagement on posts with images, um, posts about leadership tips, and also resources from our blog and elsewhere. So at this point, you're probably asking, where do I get this information? Um, and you find this information in analytics. So analytics, just to define that, because I'm going to use that phrase multiple times throughout the rest of the presentation. Um, this is a collection of data about your social media accounts that includes likes, comments, shares, and reach that you can analyze and use to help better build your social media strategy. Um, so I'm going to tell you how to find this information because that's important, you know, just saying analytics and then letting you be, 
<laughs> it's not the best. So um, I took a screenshot of our um, Facebook page. I'm going to start there and I'm going to briefly talk about the other ones too because they follow a similar um, route as Facebook does. Um, it's so much easier than it sounds, I promise. So to get there, you're going to want to log into your Facebook and you're going to go to your Facebook page um, for whatever organization. Um, and you'll see there's a tab up at the top that says insights, which I've highlighted in red for you guys. Um, and then in the left hand, once you go into the insights panel, in the left hand sidebar, you'll see a list of different things. And I'm starting in people first. This is where you'll find information about your audience. So as you can see, our audience is mostly female, and we have a breakdown of what our audience in general is. We can also see geographic locations of our audience, so where they're coming from the most. Um, and this is a great place to start. Um, I will say social media, um, you know, your demographics on social media might be a little different than the people that you see in real life. Um, especially if they don't use social media, um, it only works off the data it can gather. So um, there might be an audience that it's missing. And in those cases, you might be able to fill in the blanks just based on your own knowledge. So if you go to posts, which is also in the left-hand sidebar, I've highlighted it for you. This is where you'll find information about the times your audience is most likely to be online. And as you can see, our peak time on average is 8 p.m. That's across all days. And if you were to hover over those blocks and say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the grid, um, the graph at the bottom will update and show you what the best times on that day are. So um, it's a really great tool to use. Um, you don't want to assume that your audience has the same schedule as you. You might be on social media around 3 p.m., but your audience might be checking it at 6 a.m. There's really no way to know without looking at the data. So, also under posts, um, you'll, oh, I'm sorry, if you scroll down, uh, you'll also see, yeah, under posts, um, you'll see this little thing that says all posts scheduled or I'm sorry, published, um, right at the bottom, um, which is on this page. And this is where you'll find a list of every post you've made, um, and it'll have a breakdown of their reach, engagement, and um, you can also use this information to understand what type of posts work. So this is a great breakdown to look at. You can see, wow, you know, we had 300 people look at this post and only two people saw the other one. And so maybe you look at the data, you see, Oh, I posted it on a Wednesday at 2 p.m. and you look at the chart at the top and you see that's not a great time for Wednesdays. Um, so moving forward, you can take that information um, and set that aside and use that to figure out when you want to post. And I like to um, take a look at this information fairly often and um, write down the peak times for each day so that I can reference them later when I'm scheduling posts. So Another great thing you can do here um, in this back end is if you go to the overview, um, you'll see that in the left sidebar, um, you can actually export all the data as a spreadsheet to keep for your records, which is great um, because then you can create reports to share with key team members or just for your reference. Um, I personally do social media reports quarterly, but when you're starting out, it can be helpful to look at the data monthly or even weekly. Um, so before I move into the next, um, I'm going to talk about how you do the analytics for LinkedIn and Twitter as well. But before I do that, I'm going to um, stop the sharing and I'm going to go into the chat and see if you guys have any questions. So feel free to ask if you have anything. I'll give you guys a minute or so. Okay, um, so I'm gonna move on to the next part. Um, I'll show you guys LinkedIn and Twitter. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in there. Um, okay, so LinkedIn is super similar. Um, you're gonna log into your normal LinkedIn page. Um, you're gonna go to um, whatever your page is on LinkedIn and you're gonna look at the box at the top that says analytics. 
And you can see there's a drop down um, and it shows you visitors, updates, and followers. Um, but you can also just go to a general overview, which is what I'm going to show you. Um, here's the back end. Um, and what I wanted to show you too is you can also export a spreadsheet. Um, you can see here, I just chose a random time and then you can update that, export the spreadsheet and then look at that data that way. Um, and Twitter is a little bit different. Um, you need to be logged into Twitter already, but it's actually a separate website. I've put it at the bottom. It says analytics.twitter.com. Um, it's very similar to the two. You can also export data, um, but it's just a little bit harder to find since when you log into your Twitter, it's not immediately uh, apparent where it is. So um, you'll see up here on the top that I've highlighted, there's tabs that are really similar, um, and this will lead you to different information about your audience. So I've also put together this list. This is a breakdown of the things that are most important to keep track of when you're doing analytics. Um, you wanna look at total engagement. So like I said, that was how many people interacted and saw your post, um, or it just interacted. Um, you're gonna wanna look at likes, comments, shares, and then you're also going to want to look at reach um, and that's how many people saw it who um, both maybe interacted with your post and who didn't as well um, and like i said collecting this data monthly and quarterly um, or both um, and comparing this this data to um, previous months or quarters will help you understand what's going well and what you need to to do to improve your social media presence um, and it's always great to see, you know, when things are improving, um, you know, oh, now we have so many more followers or we got a ton of likes on this one particular post. Um, and yeah, that's a great feeling. So, um, and it's also great data to share with people, um, to show them the value of social media too. Um, if you work in a place that doesn't necessarily use social media all the time, having this data and, and showing that it's been working is a great tool to have. So um, I'm going to talk next about content creation, now that I've laid down the basics of branding and strategy. But I, I wanna pause again and see if you guys have any other questions about analytics before I move on. Um, yes, Colleen, uh, we use um, Buffer, or I'm sorry, we use, uh, yeah, well, we use Buffer, not Hootsuite. Colleen asked, um, do you use analytical software like Hootsuite, or do you only use the analytics available on platforms? Okay, so we actually used Hootsuite for a while, um, and we, from my personal experience, um, it doesn't always pull the data as well as you can get it from the actual back end of the programs. Um, it's, of course, much easier to pull from one program like that instead. Um, so I think, um, yeah, you can definitely use that, but I would say um, you might wanna like take a look at both at first and see if there's any difference before you decide on whether or not you wanna do the back end or whether or not you're gonna use a program. Hopefully that answers your question, Colleen. And Sonia asked, um, can we get a list of links or a copy of the chat? Yes. Um, I'm gonna be sending a, a copy of this and there will also be a transcript. So um, you should be able to find everything you need for that. Okay. Anybody have any other questions about analytics? You're welcome, Sonia. Okay. So moving on, I'm going to talk about content creation. Um, so now that you know what time you're going to post, who your audience is, and what type of content you're looking for, you're going to want to start creating and gathering your content. And the first thing you want to do is think about key dates. Um, this could be things like holidays, school closings, um, but it, it could also be special events that your organization is hosting. Um, and at this point, it's, a great, it's great to pull out a calendar or use a calendar template like 
maybe even just Google Calendar or, you know, if you have an iPhone, maybe on your iPhone too, um, and just start marking big events. Um, you'll be referring to this calendar when you're placing posts into whichever tool you use, which I'll talk a little bit about later. So the next thing you want to do is think about the ways that you can mix up your posts to keep people engaged. Um, you might want to mix in relevant news or policy stories related to early childhood, um, maybe some parenting tips or other things that relate to your organization. And this stuff should be a supplement to the normal content you're sharing. So, you know, like I said, those things about key dates or different events that your organization is having, um, these should be, you know, a way to keep things mixed up on social media. So, and then finally, you're gonna to wanna to think about custom content. Uh, this doesn't apply to everybody, so if it's not something you do or want to do, this is just an extra. Um, but, you know, if your organization has a blog, you could be using um, social media to promote new posts. So not only are you driving traffic to your social media accounts, but you're also driving traffic to your website, which is great. Um, you also wanna think about how often these posts are gonna come out, um, and plan ahead for them. Um, some other ideas for custom content could be like general messages to parents maybe, or just you know cute photos or daily interaction with kids if you're allowed to post those. Um, and all of these elements help keep your social media relevant. And the more you're consistent with posting these types of things, the more people will come to your page with this information. Now, you might want to create some custom things. Maybe there's a quote you want to share that would be cool as an image and you want to use the colors and the fonts from your brand. Um, maybe you just need to crop a photo. Uh, and there are some tools that you can use to make that easy if you don't have Photoshop or another editing app on your computer or even your phone. Um, some of these include Canva, PicMonkey, and Pablo. Um, but I'm sure you can find plenty more if you do some quick Googling. I know there's a ton of photo editing apps you can download on your phone. Um, you know, I'm sure there's different ones for Android and iPhone. Um, so those work great too. Um, I like Canva a lot because you can create templates. Um, you can share things really easily with other people on your team. Um, and they can use like the same color scheme and, um, Photo or photos and fonts and everything as you do. Um, and the great thing about these tools is that they have pre-sized images for your feeds so that you can make sure that the images will show up how it should on your audience's feed. Um, with tools like, um, you know, with these tools, uh, they will um, update when things update. So, you know, when Facebook changes their um, image size and their news feed, uh, these tools will update that as well so that you have that current size that you need. Okay, so um, I put this list up, which is just kind of a breakdown of those things that I talked about. Um, you want to use, you want to have key dates, um, variety, imagery, um, custom content. Uh, you want to make sure that your voice is consistent. We talked a little bit about that in branding. Um, but it's very important that everything kind of fits together and looks like it was made, if you think about it as one person, um, like it was made by one person, even though it could potentially be multiple people posting on social media. So um, I think I, I'm gonna check and make sure you guys are still, uh, Hold on just a second. Let me just make sure that you guys. Okay. Um, it. I don't know if you guys are. So one of you, it sounds like, might be unmuted. So if you are, you're gonna want to hit that little microphone at the bottom. Um, get back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So. So far, we've talked about branding, strategy content creation, um, and I want to give us another few minutes to talk about scheduling. Uh, I'm sorry, to ask me any questions before we move on to scheduling. So um, if you guys have any questions about some of the other things that I've covered so far in the presentation, um, feel free to ask. I'll give you guys a few minutes. Um, C. Maltese 
asked, do you use the free buffer? Um, you can use uh, the free version of buffer. We use the paid version. Um, I think if you're going to be posting probably more than like a few times a week, I would say the paid version of buffer is much better. Um, especially too, if you have multiple social media channels, um, which we do, um, you get more options to add things and um, customize. So I would say it's worth it. And that's true of um, pretty much all of the scheduling apps that you could, you could get. Anyone else have any questions? Nope. Okay. Well, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to type them in there. When I take another break, I'll um, take a look and try to answer them for you guys. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about scheduling next. Um, so you have learned about your audience. Um, you know when to post. Um, and now it's time to actually talk about scheduling, which is, I think, the best part um, because you get to see, you know, uh, what your at work is actually going to look like um, and you get it off your to-do list, too. So that's the best part. Um, and I have a quote for you here. It's not what you upload. It's the strategy with which you upload. Um, social media should not be a stressful experience. You should be able to plan ahead so that you can get on with your busy life. I know. Um, Everybody, <laughs> if you're in the early childhood field, I'm sure your day-to-day -day is very busy um, and social media can be one less thing you don't have to worry about um, with a little planning. So the first thing you'll want to do is pick a tool to help you. Um, when you schedule ahead of time, you save yourself so much time. And not only that, you stay consistent because you won't have to post manually every day. Um, like I said, I personally prefer Buffer. That's what we use, but all of them are great. Um, I've used Hootsuite in the past and then also um, another tool called Sprout, um, which is great as well. Um, Planoly I put on there and that's used to schedule Instagram posts. Um, if you use uh, Instagram, this is great, especially if it's the only social media you use, which um, depending on what your organization is, I wouldn't necessarily say that should be the only one you should use. You should probably also use Facebook at a minimum, but um, it's a great tool for Instagram because you can save hashtags as groups and then easily copy those. Um, and Tailwind is a tool specifically for Pinterest. So if you're blogging a lot or have other original content on your website, um, Pinterest is a great tool to get more traffic. Um, and uh, Buffer and Hootsuite also um, encapsulate Pinterest and um, Instagram. So, uh, you know, if you just want one thing that does everything, those would be kind of your option there. Um, but you should be using, you know, as many as makes sense for your organization, as many, um, you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything that makes sense for your organization you should try to be on because that's an opportunity to reach a different audience. Um, so you might want to sign up for a few of them um, and maybe test them out and see what you think. Um, you might decide that you really like one over the other. You might decide, um, you know, you like one, but you only need the free version. There's really no way to know unless you start using the tool um, and practice scheduling content and uh, put things out there. So, um, I'm going to talk quickly about Buffer because, like I said, they're all pretty similar. Um, I think someone is unmuted. Hold on just a second. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you kind of how we schedule these posts. Um, and you guys can take that information and whatever you end up using, hopefully um, 
this makes sense for that too. So um, here's kind of a back end of buffer um, and you'll see, uh, you can see the posts. We generally post Monday through Friday and not on the weekends. Um, and you'll see the second week um, has some posts that there are two on one day. Um, and I love this view because you can see like, you know, visually see where you have gaps, where you could add new posts. Um, so on the right, uh, left hand side, you'll see um, these are all of our social media accounts. Um, whatever tool you use, it'll walk you through linking these accounts. So I'm not going to talk too much about how to do that. Um, they'll explain it. Whatever you sign up for, they'll have you log into each one um, and connect you to it. So um, it doesn't make sense for me to explain that. Um, and here is where you'll add your posts. Um, you'll click here and the dialog box will pop up, which will allow you to select which social media you want to post. So that's what it looks like. Um, and you'll just type your information in there um, and it'll post to all the social media accounts you want it to. Um, you just click the icons there. You'll see the, you know, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn icons. Um, and if you don't want one, want one um, to post, you just click on that one and it'll um, deselect that. Uh, so then once you have your post written, um, which it helps, I like to do um, scheduling all at once. So maybe like uh, sometimes I'll do it for the whole month if I have enough time, but sometimes I'll just do it for a week in advance or, you know, two weeks in advance and I'll set aside some time. Um, I'll usually have a list of what needs to be posted um, and, you know, maybe I'll take a look at our events calendar um, and we also have like a calendar that we use that shows the different things that we need to talk about. Usually it's the same as our email stuff, so it makes it really easy to know when I need to post things. Um, and I just sit there and I you know, maybe it takes me like an hour and I just um, gather all my content and try to schedule it all at once so that um, it's all in there and I don't have to worry about it once it's posted. Um, the, another cool thing about this as well is that uh, once you set this, these things in here, if something goes wrong and it doesn't post, um, whatever tool you use will usually just email you and let you know that a post failed and you'll be able to go in and either manually post it or, um, you know, maybe you don't need to post it anymore and it's not a huge deal. Um, but that's great too, because uh, I know it can be a little scary to just let a program just take over. Um, but uh, usually that's rare. Sometimes, you know, Facebook updates and things get unlinked and that's usually the issue. So uh, you'll see here is what it looks like when you actually schedule the post. So you'll pick a date and a time and you'll schedule it and that's pretty much it um this time should be based off the information that you pulled um you know we talked a little bit about analytics that's where you should pull that information from and it's pretty much as easy as that just scheduling so um i'm gonna stop here for a second and just see if you guys have any questions about scheduling um and i know i saw some questions pop up as i was talking so I'm going to try and answer those first, but feel free to just keep typing them. Um, C Maltese asked, have you found any successful free versions? Yeah, um, so we've used uh, like the free version of Hootsuite and Buffer, um, and both of those are fine, but I would say um, for us, just the amount that we post and um, the amount of things that we use, uh, uh, I would say the paid version is better for us, but I would not discourage you from using the free version at all if that better fits your needs. Um, and Dana asked, it seems like you don't use Pinterest. Is this on purpose or does it have to do with the type of content you share? Does Pinterest interact with scheduling posts on Buffer? I.e., can you schedule a post, a Pinterest post on Buffer also? Okay, so yes, you can schedule a post on um, Pinterest through Buffer, um, and I believe you can do it through Hootsuite as well. You can also use that tool, um, Tailwind, if you would want. Um, but I would say um, because we don't generally, so we have resources come out occasionally, um, and we do use Pinterest, um, we'll post 
you know, um, pin those things on the Pinterest. But because it's so occasional, sometimes we'll just do it, um, you know, uh, on our own. But I would say if you're going to be posting a lot, um, you can do that. The only thing is, and here's where I'll clarify. So if you use Pinterest day to day, um, you'll know that you go to your feed and you can pin the different things that show up. Um, this is not the same. This is like creating your own pin out of nowhere. Um, so you'll need to add like the link and stuff and um, the description information. So if you want to keep up with the Pinterest, you'll still have to log into the back. You'll have to log into Pinterest and actually physically pin things. Um, and I would suggest doing that if you're going to use Pinterest seriously, I would consider um, probably doing that like if you can once a day or at least once a week so that your, your name is continually showing up in people's feeds. So I hope that answered your question, Dana. And does anybody else have any questions about any of this stuff? Oh, you're welcome. Give you guys a minute or so. Sonia, that would be tough to manage. Do you mean Pinterest? Daily pins, yeah. Um, I would say like it's not necessarily necessary for everybody's organization. Um, I would say if you're making a lot of unique content, like you're blogging often, it's worth the time because you'll reach so many people. But if you're just a, you know, a small organization or you don't create a lot of custom content like blog posts, I wouldn't worry about it that much. That's why I'm mostly focusing on um, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Facebook because those are the core ones that will probably reach most people's audience. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, so um, yeah, and I know uh, I just want to say again too that um, kind of in that same lane of should I use Pinterest or not, um, you know, as you're using the different social media outlets, you might realize, you know, we have no one on LinkedIn and maybe it's not worth to spend as much time on it. Um, and that's very possible. Maybe, you know, um, for us, we use LinkedIn, but um, because we're a leadership organization, it makes sense for us. You know, if you're um, mostly trying to reach parents, they might not add you. <laughs> they might not even think to like your page on LinkedIn. Um, so, of course, too, what comes with that is you're going to want to let people know um, that you have these outlets. Um, otherwise, they're not going to look for you on there. They might, especially on Facebook. Um, but, you know, I would put, you know, uh, follow us, follow us on social media, um, you know, on different flyers you give people, make sure it's on your website. That is key. Um, if you use something like Squarespace or like Wix to make your website, um, which a lot of people do now, they'll have tools where you can easily add those icons and link them. Um, but if you, you know, you have a more complex like WordPress or you had someone custom make you a website, I would reach out to them and make sure that you can get those things on your website if they're not already there. Um, because otherwise people will come to your website and they might not even know that you have social media. Um, and that's another way to keep them up to date on day-to-day -day stuff, which is really important. So... I'm gonna get back to this. And like I said, if you have any questions, just feel free to add them into the chat. Um, and I will try to take some breaks as we move along so that um, you know I can answer those for you. So you're gonna wanna, when you're scheduling stuff, you're gonna wanna start small. You know, posting once a week is fine. Um, move it up to three to five times or even seven or more once you're comfortable. Um, you know, the key is just to be consistent. Um, you want to make sure that your voice and your style is unified. 
really take the time to make sure that your photo, the photos you're sharing and the content you're sharing really represent who you want or how you want your brand to be seen. Um, it's so important when making sure that, um, you know, your social media presence is the best it could possibly be. Um, and yeah, so once you have, um, you scheduled things in whatever tool you chose. So if it's Buffer, if it's Hootsuite, if it's something else, um, you're going to want to take a look at those occasionally. Um, you know, something might come up and you might want to look at your calendar and say, oh, I can move this post to a week from now and put something that's more important in there too. Um, and I would say once you get more comfortable, there's nothing wrong with posting multiple times a day if it's something really important. You know, you might want to post in the morning and once in the evening um, so that those two groups get to see that depending on what your analytics say. Um, I would say though, be very careful with posting multiple times a day. You definitely do not want to annoy people. So <laughs> keep that in mind. My rule is no more than two or three times. Um, and you want to have them pretty evenly spaced out, not one after another, um, because that'll frustrate people as well. So um, the next thing um, I want to talk about is just kind of what a week of posts could look like. You know, if you have a new blog post, you might want to post that on Monday. Tuesday, you might want to share an article, something that relates to early childhood or your blog post or both, if that's possible. Um, you know, the next day you might post a quote or maybe a fact. Um, if you're posting a blog post, you want that to kind of link in so that it's back in people's minds. Um, and then maybe Thursday you post about curriculum or something that, you know, just general that you want to share with your audience. Um, and then you can post about the blog post again. I would say when you're posting about the same thing more than once, um, I would make sure that you're using slightly different wording. So, and that is true with um, Twitter especially. Uh, they have a lot of rules where if you're posting the exact same wording, you can actually get like kicked off uh, social media. Like um, you'll get a, um, I'm not sure what you call it, maybe not like a ban, but like you'll be like muted for, um, you know, a certain amount of time until they can prove that you're not a robot basically that's spamming people. So um, that's very important to um, make sure that you're mixing it up. You're not sharing the same thing over and over again because for not only that reason, but also because you don't want to annoy anybody. Um, and the more people that uh, get annoyed with seeing your content, like they're like, I've seen the same thing over and over and over again, they might unfollow you, which is what you do not want. Um, so keeping that variety, making sure everything is in that same voice that you want it to be, um, will really help you grow your social media presence. Um, you know, Speaking, um, speaking from experience, the more you post, the more engagement you get, um, the more engagement you get and the more shares, um, the more people who see your content, the more followers you get and um, it just helps everything else. Your, um, if you have an email list, your email list will grow more, especially if you're promoting it on social media, you probably get more clicks on your website. Um, and some people go to social media for <laughs> all of their information. They might not even go to your website. They might log into Facebook and, you know, type in um, for us, the McCormick Center and see what our hours and our contact information are that way. So I'm going to give you my, my final, you know, last bit of um, this webinar, this last end of the webinar. I'm going to talk about tips and tricks to boost your brand. Um, but before I do that, I want to take a break and just see if you guys have any more questions. So Dana asks, when making a Twitter account or LinkedIn page, is there a different way you need to go about it since it's for an organization page versus a personal account? Okay, so um, when you're making a Twitter account, yes. Um, the Twitter account, unlike Facebook, 
you can't actually, um, you can't make the, uh, the Twitter be a part of your personal Twitter like you can on Facebook. So like you can become an admin on a Facebook page. You unfortunately can't do that with Twitter. So you'll have to have a separate Twitter account for your organization. Um, and for LinkedIn, it's really similar to Facebook where you will create a page. Um, and I believe that would be like in your sidebar on LinkedIn. Um, I, I believe it's just uh, like create an organization or page. Um, and then you can add admins like you can on Facebook, which is great because then multiple people can take a look at it. So hopefully that answers your question, Dana. Does anybody else have any other questions? I'll give you guys a few minutes. Thank you, Lori. I'm glad you found it helpful. And anybody who jumped on kind of later, if you want to um, just post where you're watching from too, if you didn't share that earlier, I'd love to see that information because, you know, it's so cool. I mean, I'm in Illinois, but it's so cool to see when um, people are out of state too. You know, the internet is great. It just connects everybody. New Jersey, I was born in New Jersey, so very cool. Los Angeles, awesome. Oregon. Virginia, nice. Very cool. And, you know, we talked about, um, you know, branding strategy, content creation and scheduling. Do you guys, do you guys have any other questions? Um, you know, I'll give you a few minutes or so to type some in if you do. It can be anything social media related. So um, if there's just something that you're like, uh, you know, don't know how to do or, um, you know, want some clarification on from earlier, be happy to answer that for you. Okay, Janina said, how about engaging with the audience or encouraging participation on posts? Yeah, so um, I will get into that a little bit in my last bit, um, but I think the best way to engage with your audience um, is to post questions. Um, and also when people ask questions on Facebook or whatever you're using, you wanna answer them as as quickly as you can. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be that minute. You know, if you have work hours, you can just comment during your work hours if that's, if that's how it works for you. Um, but responding to them and showing that you're, um, it's not just a one way thing where people are talking to you and you don't say anything back really helps. And the more you do that, um, the more people will respond. Um, I also know that there are some cool things you can do like, you know, share, uh, maybe there's different events that you can share photos of and you can tag people in them. Um, so not only does it show up in their feed, um, their friends will see it um, and they might interact and comment on your post too. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll talk a little bit more about engagement in our, uh, you know, the last half of this presentation. Um, Elizabeth asks, do hashtags work on Facebook? Yes, they do. And I'm also gonna talk about hashtags in a little bit. Okay, C Maltese asks, how does social media improve SEO? Okay, so I am by no means an SEO expert, um, but I will say um, if you're sharing, you know, links to your website, um, that'll help you drive traffic. Um, and I don't know if that helps exactly with SEO, but it will help drive traffic and um, probably make your content easier to find. Okay, and Keisha asks, um, she said she got in here late. Yes, so um, Keisha, I will be sending um, an email probably tomorrow with this recording. Um, I'm also gonna try and put a, a transcript up there for you. 
So don't worry about um, coming in late. Janina, oh, you're welcome, Janina. Okay, and W Connell one, um, when is it appropriate or important to boost a post? Also do paid ads on Facebook work or make a difference in promoting your page? Yes, definitely. Um, definitely make a difference in promoting your page. Um, I would say when you see um, how I determine whether or not I'm going to boost a post or, you know, make it an ad, um, it's something that I really need people to look at. So maybe it's an event that we're hosting. Um, you know, uh, we do a lot of different trainings. So, um, you know, if enrollment is low, we might decide let's, you know, put an ad for that out um, and see if we can get some more clicks. Um, I would say they generally work pretty well. I would say Facebook is the best one for us, but you know, um, that's really something that you can only know through experience whether or not it, it'll be worth it for you to boost the posts. So um, I would say too, um, if you're just starting out your page, you might want to do some ads and maybe, um, you know, if you're a local organization, you might want to just target them to that specific area if that's who you're trying to reach. Um, and the cool thing about that is it'll just show up in people's feeds um, and they'll be able to see it no matter, you know, hopefully if they're in that area that you want them to see it in. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, it's not super important to boost posts or um, do ads if you're just starting out, but it's a really great supplement um, to, you know, get more engagement on your page. And you're welcome, Keisha. Anybody else have any questions before I move on to the next bit? Okay, so I am going to talk to you guys. Oh, I see one more question come up. Let me answer that. Are there any other up and coming social media platforms that we should be keeping an eye out for or getting on early? Dana asked that. Um, I would say not really at the moment. Um, there are things like uh, Snapchat um, and like there's, I. I want to be careful in calling it social media because I'm not, it's more like a video app that you can share with things like TikTok. Um, and those things are probably not going to be relevant to you. Um, if you really want to try using them, you totally can. Um, but I would say, you know, those core ones like Facebook and, and Twitter and LinkedIn are really going to probably be what's best for you right now. Um, but I mean, as things come up, you'll probably hear about them. And I would definitely try them out yourself before you decide to make an organization's, like an organizational page for them. Um, and that's mainly to see, you know, how much do you actually use it? Does it even make sense for your organization to be on it? You know, um, I know some people um, at the McCormick Center had mentioned maybe getting on Snapchat or, you know, um, doing Instagram. But the fact of the matter is we don't, because they're very um, photo based um, things uh, and like people are looking for a specific amount of content, let's say for on Instagram um, in particular, it doesn't quite make sense for us to be on there. You know, so if you're taking a lot of photos of the day to day, Instagram might be great. Snapchat might be great. People might see your stories and they might be excited to see, you know, um, different activities that you're having, but it's not going to work for everyone. So um, when those new things do come up, I would say, you know, keep an open mind and take a look at it for sure. But um, don't always be like super quick to jump on to them because you don't want to add more work necessarily for something that doesn't make any sense for your organization to use. Oh, hopefully that answered that. And if you guys, like I said, um, just go ahead and keep typing questions as I uh, talk, if you have anything at all. When I take another break, I will get back to those and answer them for you.
Okay, so I'm going to talk, this is the fun part. So these are kind of extras to just help you further boost your brand on social media. My first tip for you is to use hashtags. So um, I know a lot of people are familiar with them, but if you're not, uh, a hashtag is a word or phrase that's preceded by a hash sign, or some people know it as the pound sign, um, used on social media websites and applications, especially Twitter, to identify messages on a specific topic. So um, I put a little just fake tweet down there. I love being an early childhood leader, and that's hashtag early childhood leadership, and hashtag leadership. Um, and you can use hashtags on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, yeah, Pinterest, um, Instagram, and um, really what hashtags are, are a way for people to find you. Um, you know, if you think about uh, you're looking for a specific thing, you know, maybe you're looking for, um, and this is an early childhood example, but maybe you're looking for a new hair salon, and so you might search, you know, hashtag hairstylist or you know something along those lines um, and those will help you find people so um, hashtags really help you target your message to a particular group who really wants to see your messaging um, and in order to figure out you know what kind of hashtags you want to use I would take a look um, and this would be some research that you would want to do I would take a look at other organizations who are in a similar lane as you. So this might be competitors, but it could also be, um, you know, maybe just people within the field. Um, maybe there's a, a speaker that you really like um, who talks about early childhood, or um, maybe it's an organization like us. You could take a look at our pages and see what hashtags we use. Um, and I like to keep a document of those. Um, just so that I can pull from them later and it makes it so much easier later on when you're like I you know I can't remember all these hashtags I like to use um, you can just pull from there and see what's relevant um, so why would you use them like I said it's a great way to reach new people it gets you noticed um, you know when you click on the hashtag you'll find other people who have used that hashtag um, so it's a great way to connect yourself to a bigger group. Um, and another reason is that it'll get you noticed by other brands or organizations who might share your content. You know, sometimes there will be a hashtag to promote a specific cause. And by using that hashtag, you're joining the conversation, which makes you more visible. And that's great. Um, you know, sometimes we'll, uh, there will be campaigns, especially on Twitter. Um, Twitter is kind of... Facebook uses hashtags too, but Twitter is kind of where they're most known to be used. Um, so, you know, sometimes there's, uh, you'll see like there's something trending. And if it's related to your organization, you can post using that hashtag and you get put into that group. Um, and then an organization who's looking for posts like that might find that and use that information um, and maybe share your page or you know, um, retweet you or share your post. Um, so that's a great way to use them and a, a great reason to use them. So how should you use them? Um, I would say, uh, you know, you can do the standard putting them at the end of your post. You can also try blending them into the sentence. So for instance, like that previous quote, instead of, you know, I love being an early childhood leader and then having the hashtags at the end, you could say, I love being a hashtag early childhood leader, or um, another really popular one is just hashtag ECE. Um, and those, you know, that looks cool um, because you're kind of blending it in there. It's part of the sentence. Um, and it also makes the hashtag not as obvious um, because it's not just sitting at the end. People are more likely to read them because they'll be reading your whole post. Okay. And I would also say too, um, you're gonna want to use hashtags sparingly. Uh, maybe you only use a few. It's better to use a few than to use like 40. Um, <laughs> I would say to start five tops. Um, if you use too many, some applications will assume you're spam and you might even reach less people than you had before, which 
you know, totally negates the reason of using hashtags in the first place. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, for instance, like Instagram, they call it, I think it's like shadow banning where you won't even know <laughs> that you are not getting as much reach because you use so many hashtags. But if you do use like 40 hashtags, it's possible that Instagram will just assume that you're spam and just make your page un, like not visible to people. And that's kind of the same thing with Facebook. You could even get your page taken down <laughs> if you use too many hashtags. So I would say stay in the safe state. It's better to say stay safe than to use a ton of them. Um, like I said, five t tops is usually a good rule. If you want to use a few more, I wouldn't be scared. It's really only when you start getting into like those bigger double digits that it starts looking like really bad spam. <laughs> so um, especially on Facebook um, and LinkedIn, Twitter, you only have a, a limited character amount. So um, it's not even possible to do that many, but um, yeah. So um, I'm gonna pause here and I see there's some questions. So if you guys have any questions about hashtags, um, feel free to pop those in the chat. Yeah, uh, Dana asked, um, do you have any recommendations for how to find the trending hashtags in this field? Yeah, so um, go to uh, other organizations' pages and take a look at what they're using. And like I said, putting them in a document really helps um, because you can take a look at those and keep them for your records. Um, and you can also, if you want, um, use that information and you know if you use just one hashtag and you're like that didn't work um, I would try it a few more times before you completely abandon it um, but you can also put that information in there and say you know this hashtag's not working you know and just remove it from your list which is great um, but yeah like I said other organizations I would also just use the search function on whatever social media you're using um, and take a look and see, you know, maybe just type in early childhood and you'll see all the posts that mention that. Um, and you can see what other hashtags they're using. Um, and I would also say too, um, sometimes depending on what you're using, like um, Instagram and Facebook do this, or and Twitter does too, where you'll start typing um, and it'll show you like a list of hashtags that are similar that you can use and then you can just click them. Um, and that helps, but yeah, I think keeping a list of them really helps too. So Danan says, I've seen some people not include hashtags in their posts, but rather comment on their own posts with the hashtags. Is one way better than the other? Um, I think for me, it makes more sense to actually, um, to uh, actually include them in your post. Um, now, I think people do that on Instagram uh, fairly often where they'll comment the hashtags, and that's because the Instagram algorithm is a little bit different than the other social media, um, and uh, Instagram uh, prioritizes uh, comments. So um, like it reads the comments and it'll send people there based on the hashtags. But I, I really think it makes the most sense to add it into the post, especially if you're not being spammy and you're not putting a ton of hashtags. I would say that's probably the best way to do it. Does anybody else have any questions about hashtags? Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next tip for you guys. Um, and, you know, as I've said before, just feel free to, sh uh, you know, ask some, com uh, some questions in there if you have any as they come up and I'll try to get to them as I um, get to the different breaks here. So my second tip for you um, is to ask questions. Uh, the cool thing about all of these different social media outlets is most of them have a way for you to ask for people's opinions or host a poll. Um, and polls are really fun because they're interactive. So 
people get to see how everybody else voted, which is great. Um, and they also get to share their opinion, which is awesome. Um, and usually it's anonymous too. So, you know, um, people might be more apt to actually participate because people won't know that they did. Um, and you'll have to decide, you know, what types of uh, polls and, and things work for you. Um, you know, it might not be on everything, but let's say you have an event coming up and you're like, should we serve pizza or should we serve, you know, um, just salads or something? <laughs> you can have people vote on those things and see what the consensus is. Um, and it's something fun for the whole community to get involved in. Um, I also think too, you know, asking people to share their opinion on a story. So um, you might see a post and it's all about, um, you know, uh, talking about a different way of teaching children. You can ask people for their opinion, um, what they think about it, or if they have any experiences um, with this type of, you know, learning or program or whatever it is. Um, and that's a great way to get people engaged. Um, and I would say if you do do these things, you will definitely want to pay attention to the comments more closely than you would for your normal posts. Um, so you're going to want to try and keep them engaged by answering, you know, um, they share their opinion. You go, oh, great. Thanks for sharing and, you know, tag them so that they see it. Um, you know, if let's say it's on Twitter and you asked you know, just a general question you wanted people to answer. You might retweet some of the replies to your post. Um, you can't do that with Facebook. You can't like share the comments, um, but just responding to them is great, is good enough usually. Um, another tip could be to share, ask people to share stories. So, um, you know, maybe you uh, share something and you're like, tell me about a fun time you know, maybe from your childhood or, you know, that was like this. Um, people love to talk about themselves. So, and that's a rule with everything. Um, you know, uh, keep people engaged by asking them to share things about themselves. And, um, you know, when they do share, you want to continue that engagement, like I said. Um, you can also ask people to share photos. Um, you can ask them to, you know, um, tag themselves in something or, um, you know, maybe they share a photo on their own personal page and you ask them to tag you in it. And that's another way to create engagement. Um, and like I said, you know, you just want to make sure that when you're asking things of your audience that you are, you know, um, continuously um, checking up on it. Um, you know, I think it's very important to not just put a question out there, put a poll out there, ask people to share things without doing something with it. So, um, you know, because otherwise they'll be like, what's the point? Um, and I mean, some people love to comment on social media, no matter what, um, they don't care what it is. They just want to share and that's great. Um, but you want to do something with it. So, um, give them a reason to share. Um, you know, maybe you put something together. There's like some apps where you can like um, aggregate photos and things and make like little slideshows or something. You could do things like that or, um, you know, just take those quotes too. Like if you're asking people like, what did you really enjoy about, you know, this event or, um, whatever you can take those quotes and use them maybe to help promote some other things. So, um, yeah, any way that you can, um, you know, ask something of your audience, ask their opinion is a, um, great thing to continue engagement. So I'm going to, I saw some questions pop up, so I'm going to go in there and see. Colleen said, general social media question, that's fine. Um, do you find it helpful to post a transcription of audio or video content? Does the content reach significantly more people that way? I would say yes. Um, you know, uh, just from an accessibility standpoint, having a transcription um, and captions on your video when you do post things um, is a really great way to reach a, a bigger audience. It's also, if you're posting these things on your website, it also helps with SEO. So um, I'm a big supporter of transcripts. Um, I personally, uh, you know, uh, 
I'm not hearing impaired, but uh, there are a lot of people out there who are, and they appreciate the captions and the transcripts, I'm sure, a lot. So, um, yeah, but I mean, even when I'm scrolling on social media, a lot of the time I'll just watch a video uh, without the sound, and I can still watch it with the captions. So, and if you're using tools like YouTube, um, they'll do the captions for you. You can edit them to make sure that they're correct. Um, and you can also export transcripts directly from YouTube too. Um, and I know, Colleen, if you have more questions about that, I, um, you can email me too. I think my email information is in there and I can show you a little bit more of that, but I think, um, it's super helpful. And yeah, Sonia, um, Sonia says she appreciates the transcripts because she can't understand what people say sometimes. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> even with watching like Netflix or even just sometimes like a show on TV or um, I like sometimes I just miss something. So having that, um, you know, the closed captions really helps. Um, and like I said, you know, the more text that you have on your website, that's something that a search engine can crawl through. Um, and so that helps build your SEO. Um, you know, uh, they'll pull those, pull those keywords, um, and you'll be able to, um, get more people, uh, and have more traffic to your website and your social media as well as a result. So, okay. Um, one more question. Dana asks, do you have any favorite apps for making short videos that you can share on different platforms or places for free music that you can add to a slideshow of pictures? Yeah. Um, you know, I, we don't do a ton of like super short videos, but I know that there are some apps out there. I believe there's even things like on your phone. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful with that, but um, there are, I think, a few things that you can create like kind of like slideshow videos or, or short videos, um, but I, I, I don't have any off the top of my head. As for free music, um, SoundCloud's a resource. Um, but just be careful that they're Creative Commons. Um, YouTube also has, even if you don't use YouTube for this, they also have a huge free library of music um, that you can pull from that are like uh, copyright free. And I would also Google, um, you know, just like copyright free music um, or Creative Commons music and see what you can find because there's a lot of free libraries for that type of stuff. Okay, so. I am going to jump back in and again, keep asking your questions if you have them as they come up. I don't want you to forget them. So, um, you know, I'll be pausing a little bit um, in a little bit to answer those again. So my third tip is to stay engaged. And like I mentioned before, it's really important to um, keep up with the comments, answer people's questions. Um, if they share a review of your organization, thank them for that. Or if they have concerns, make sure you address those concerns. Um, and I would say, you know, you can check daily, especially if it's something that like, you know, are going to get a lot of comments. Um, you don't have to check daily. It can be like, if you're only posting a few times a week, it can be just like, the day after you posted. Um, but you're gonna wanna keep up to date with that. I know it's a little extra work, but if you have things that are scheduled, um, it should only take you like five or 10 minutes a day to just look at the notifications and make sure that there's nothing that you need to respond to. Um, I would also say take some time each week. It can be every day if you want, um, but uh, to comment on other organizations' posts or even just like them. Um, and share things when they're, uh, you know, pertinent to your organization. So I wouldn't say don't share everything. <laughs> Definitely don't go on an organization and share all of their posts because um, people will find that, you know, weird. But uh, it is good um, to, you know, share a post from an organization. So maybe they share something and you're like, wow, this is great. So when you share it, you can tag them and say, you know, what a great resource, you know, at, you know, whatever their organization's name is. Um, and that helps not only build relationships with new organizations, but also, you know, you'll show up in the feeds of the people who follow that organization as well, which is a great way to get traffic on your own page. Um, yeah, so, you know, the, this is really important to build a, a larger audience. 
Um, you know, you're, as you're growing your page, um, you want people to feel like you're responsive, not like they're talking to a wall. So um, it's very important, you know, especially on pages where people can leave reviews like Facebook, um, when people have negative comments, you want to respond to that immediately. Um, if links are broken on something, you want to let people know as soon as you can and try to resolve that. Um, with uh, different social media that have messages, like Facebook, for instance, um, you're going to want to do your best to respond to them quickly because uh, Facebook puts a percentage of your response time on there <laughs> for people who visit your page to see. So when they message you, they'll see like, oh, they, I, they only get responses 30% of the time, um, which doesn't look great. Um, and I mean, it doesn't have to be like, you know, not everything can be 100% because, you know, occasionally you'll get spam or weird messages um, that you're just gonna wanna delete instead of respond to. Um, but when you are getting those things, you want to make sure that people feel like they can ask you these questions and um, that you're going to actually respond. So does anybody have any questions about engagement at all? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to move on to this tip number four, which is just to stay up to date. Um, you know, social media is changing all the time. Um, if you use it regularly, you'll notice that um, Facebook changes sometimes, it updates, um, and, you know, following different um, things, you know, different things on the web, um, maybe some different uh, social media marketing, um, pages that talk about that um, will help you stay up to date to that with that stuff and respond accordingly. I know that um, I try to pay attention to, um, you know, different updates in algorithms. So how Facebook um, views different content. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure that you understand how these things will affect your organization, affect your schedule and your strategy. You know, if um, Facebook decides, oh, we're no longer going to let people use hashtags, well, that might change the way that you do Facebook from now on. Um, so being aware of those things, and um, I mean, this type of stuff happens all the time. <laughs> um, you know, being aware of that and how that might affect you will help you um, to make sure that you're always reaching your audience the best way that you possibly can. Um, and some great resources that I think, you know, the McCormick Center, obviously, I'm a little biased, but um, we do share resources, um, and those are all different types of stuff. So, um, you know, occasionally we have things about marketing, um, as well as, you know, other professional development type resources. Um, so you can follow us, sign up for our email list, um, and you'll hear more about things like this um, when they actually happen. Um, there's also some like cool marketing gurus that you can follow that have daily newsletters. Um, I think it's uh, Seth Godin, Godin um, is a great resource for general marketing. Um, Sprout, which is another scheduling tool, um, they have, uh, they're a great resource for tips and tricks. Um, if you're looking for some new things to kind of spice up your social media presence. Um, and also too, you know, just do some Googling, like, you know, uh, you know, new things to try for social media or, um, you know, new social media marketing tips. And you'll find, you'll be surprised to find a lot of information because um, there are a lot of people out there who just, they only specialize in social media, like that is their only job. Um, and so they have, there are resources everywhere for you to use. So one final piece to this is that you don't wanna be stagnant. You know, in order to stay relevant, you wanna make sure that your content is reaching your audience. Um, you'll need to take a look at analytics from time to time and make sure that people are interacting how they should. But just because something worked even like a week ago doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work now. Um, that's why it's so important to stay up to date, take a look at new um, things, you know, be prepared to, um, you know, 
change your strategy as you move along. Um, you know, you might, you might see currently that your peak time is 8 p.m. That's when people are most on Facebook. Um, and so you might be posting at 8 p.m. every day and it's working for a while. And then maybe you, you know, you're not paying attention to it as much anymore and you come back and you see your engagement's really low. Well, now's the time to take a look at your analytics and make sure that, you know, that time is still what's working for you. Um, you know, again, don't assume that just because something is true at one point doesn't mean it'll be true later. Um, and you also want to make sure that, you know, you're updating your cover photo occasionally. Um, so for us, we have Leadership Connections, which is our big conference every year. So when that event passes, we wanna make sure we take that down so that it doesn't look like it's still happening or that we're not paying attention to our social media accounts. And I mean, like I say this, but I mean, it doesn't have to be like the second the event is over, but you know, within a reasonable amount of time, um, you want to make sure that the things that you're sharing are relevant. You know, you're not sharing super old links um, or old information. You know, your images are new or like up to date, um, or you have a reason at least for sharing old stuff. Um, and that'll really help, you know, build that engagement. Um, let people know about the cool things that you have going on. Um, Every time you use social media, it's an opportunity to promote your organization and, um, you know, really build something that uh, people are interested to see in their feed. So any questions? I saw one question pop up. I'm going to take a look at that real quick. Yes, yeah, I will. Um, Marilyn asks, can you put those names in here? Yes. Um, that was Seth Godin, or I think it's, it might be Godin. Um, Sprout Social was the other one. Um, and then obviously us, the McCormick Center. Um, and also too, there's a website that's called Medium where people can share articles that they've just written. Um, it's kind of like open source. I would say like there's a lot of good information on there, but if you um, don't know what to look for, not everybody on there is a professional. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so feel free to continue to ask questions. I'm gonna go into my last tip and then I'm going to give you guys some just open time to ask me whatever you'd like about social media. So my final tip for you guys is don't get discouraged. <laughs> um, I know it sounds easier said than done. Social media marketing is a process and over time you'll learn more about what your audience wants, what works, and you'll feel more confident in the tool in using the tools to your advantage. You know, the internet is your friend, although it doesn't always feel that way. <laughs> So when you're stuck and you're not sure what to do, don't be afraid to ask someone for help. You know, that might be just, you might have to post on a forum somewhere. Um, maybe just ask a friend who you think might know more about social media than you. Um, maybe that means just doing some Google research. Um, but whatever it is, you'll find the answer. And as you use social media, the easier it will get for you. Um, you know, you might feel overwhelmed, especially if you don't use social media often for your own personal use. But the more that you um, take a look at, you know, um, these different outlets and the more that you um, use them on a daily basis and interact with people, the more comfortable you'll feel and the better you'll get, a, you'll get a better grasp of what your audience is looking for. Um, and, you know, what types of things that you might um, want to post. Uh, you know, you might look at other organizations and see, you know, they have so many more followers or, um, you know, more engagement. And I would say sometimes that can be discouraging, but at the same time, it can also be really inspiring because you can see how big you can grow if you put the work into it. And I would also say on that end too, it's not always super important how many followers you have 
or how many comments and likes. The, the real important thing when it comes to marketing in general, especially social media, is whether or not you're reaching the audience that you need to reach. So maybe you don't need to reach the entire um, early childhood field or profession. Maybe you just need to reach, you know, um, I'm in Wheeling. I just need to reach people in Wheeling who have, who are parents, you know, um, and that's great. So maybe that's only, you know, a thousand people <laughs> and that's okay. Um, the point is that those, that group of people are engaging with your content. Um, they're looking at your, at your stuff um, and they are liking your posts. Um, that's really important. And uh, like I said at the beginning, social media, and I've nailed this in a couple times, but social media is an extension of your brand. Um, so this is how people get to know you. Your brand is who you are as an organization. Um, and so making sure that everything, um, everything that you post on social media is a reflection of how you want your organization to be seen is super important. Um, and that'll help you build that audience over time. Um, and, you know, like I said, you know, using the tools to your advantage, um, taking a look at analytics, really thinking about what has worked in the past, what people are really engaging with and, you know, what maybe hasn't worked and taking that information and saying, you know, Maybe people didn't really look at this post. Why didn't they? Um, you know, all those things, even if you have a month where you don't gain any new followers or you get zero comments, um, that happens. <laughs> I know, especially for us, like right around the holidays where everybody's kind of out with family, they're, you know, hopefully being present in their real lives and not so much on social media. We expect a dip. Um, an engagement and those things are very natural and should not get you discouraged because they usually bounce back <laughs> so yeah um, I'm gonna I know we got uh, some time so I want to give you guys just literally ask me anything you want about social media um, I hope that you guys can take these tips and you know bring them back into your organization and really put them into action. Um, I think that, you know, when you really have a strong um, strategy and understanding of who your audience is and how you want to be seen by them, um, it all kind of spirals into a really um, strong, uh, you know, it gets you more, uh, engagement on social media. It gets you more um, clicks on your website. It gets you more traffic in general. Um, more people hear about your organization, which is great. Um, you know, like I said, sharing videos with captions, you can reach people who um, might not be able to listen to the video, whether that's um, because they have issues with hearing or it's just because they, you know, prefer not listening to the video, um, the, all those things help. Um, so yeah, um, so I want to say thank you to you guys for that, um, for being here. And I want to give you, like I said, some time to just ask me whatever you'd like. So um, feel free to just share in the chat if you guys have any questions. So how many of you guys use, um, you know, those core Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn? 
Um, if you guys want to just comment in the chat and let me know what you guys primarily use. Um, if you don't use anything, you can let me know that too. I'm curious to see um, what you guys generally use. Okay, Marilyn said not LinkedIn, but the rest. Facebook, Pinterest. Yeah, and I would say Facebook is really the core one, um, especially like if your audience is just, um, you know, like 30s and up, most of that age group tends to use Facebook the most. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Yeah, and Instagram is great because you really um, reach uh, an audience that enjoys, you know, that visual. It's, it's pretty fun, but it can be hard to keep up with. And Elizabeth said, just started with Instagram photographing activities that the children are engaged in. Yeah, that's a great, um, it's actually a great tip because um, people, uh, especially with children, people love to see their kids um, on social media. Um, and you can use that too um, as a way to engage people. So um, if you do that on Facebook, encourage people to tag themselves um, and that'll help their friends and family see those photos as well. Yeah, and also I, I know I saw a few people say that they just use Facebook um, and that's totally cool too. Um, I think Facebook uh, is probably like the most, the one that most people use. Um, Twitter and LinkedIn, they kind of use for different reasons. We use Hannah and Kelsey say, we use the core ones and are interested in using LinkedIn more. Do you have any suggestions? We are CCR and R. Okay, um, I would say one way to help with LinkedIn um, is when you create your organization page, um, suggest that people in your organization um, add themselves to the page. So um, that means like they uh, say that they work there. Um, there's a way to do that on uh, LinkedIn. I think when you are setting up your experience, you can. Um, add the organization and it'll kind of drop down a menu and you can choose which one. Um, you can also do that manually, add people to LinkedIn um, and that'll help people find you. Um, and I would say, you know, when you post things on Facebook, post the same stuff on LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, because LinkedIn is a uh, more, people are using it for like professional networking. I would say for CCR and R, that's probably a better fit for you than it would be um, necessarily for like a center or like a, a family child care provider might not necessarily need LinkedIn. So um, yeah, I think I, hopefully that answers your question. Um, if you have any other specific questions about LinkedIn, feel free to drop those in the chat and I'll try to answer those for you. Um, Sonia says Facebook and website, yeah. And I mean, the website is really key too. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of organizations who just have a Facebook, they don't have a website. Um, and depending on what kind of organization you are, that could be okay. But I would say, um, you know, having uh, both is pretty important and it, it makes you look more legitimate for sure. Uh, Sonia asks, what do you think about stacking Facebook to LinkedIn with more info to the website? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Do you mean that you, uh, you rather than the same stuff. Okay. Oh, so like you would post something different on Facebook than you would on LinkedIn or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, that's totally fine too. Oh, additional info. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, yeah, that's totally fine. I, we share on the, um, McCormick center page, um, we'll share things. Um, maybe it's just like a snippet. Um, from the blog post or, you know, whatever it is, or maybe it's just a call out to an event and then you'll get the rest of the information on the website. So I definitely think that that's a, a very valid way to use social media as well. And I mean, drawing people to your website is an obvious plus no matter what.
Anybody else? Are there any uh, social media outlets that you guys don't use, but think you might want to use and have question about, questions about those types of things? Like, I know I mentioned it briefly, but somebody had asked me about, um, like, recently, and in, in, not in this webinar, but um, somebody had asked me about TikTok, and um, I don't personally use that, but, um, you know, that's obviously not a great fit for our organization, but um, Elizabeth asked, personally don't like Twitter, so we haven't used it. Do you think it is vital? Um, I would say definitely not vital. And if you're not comfortable with using Twitter, I would say it's better to just, you know, if you don't think you're gonna reach your audience on there, it's fine to just not use it. Um, I would say Facebook's really like the core for most people um, and the most important one to use. Um, but I would say as long as you're on Facebook, the other ones are kind of just extra. Um, you know, if you do end up using Twitter um, and you just wanna try it for a little bit, uh, you might see that you have a good audience on it, but you might not too. So um, I would say if you don't want to, you definitely don't have to. Uh, Dayton says, feel silly. Oh, don't feel silly. <laughs> but I really don't understand Twitter, why people use it, how it works, or how a center would use it. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, Dayton, I think, um, you know, uh, Twitter's a little bit different because it has the character limit. and um, you know, that can be kind of frustrating depending on what you want to use. Um, but I think, uh, I think, you know, it depends on who your audience is. So, um, you know, uh, I would say like, if you, if you really don't understand it, I would say sign up for an account on your own. Um, you know, follow some, a lot of people follow celebrities on Twitter, follow some early childhood organizations, follow some people that um, maybe that you want to hear from, or you might like their page on Facebook too, and just see how it works for a little bit. Um, that's really the best way to determine whether or not it's worth it for you to use. Um, you know, if you decide, wow, I don't think this would be worth it, you definitely don't have to use Twitter. Um, but I think that it is a great way to interact with people quickly. Twitter moves so much faster than Facebook. Um, you know, news trends quickly on Twitter. Um, things happen really quickly on Twitter. And then they kind of make their way into the other social media afterwards, like Facebook. Um, so that's one reason. Um, but I would say, you know, like I said, uh, you know, post the sim like similar stuff that you're posting on Facebook too. Um, you know, you interact with organizations on Twitter, but try it. If you don't like it and you don't, you don't think it'll be worth it, that's totally valid. Like not everything is for every situation for sure. And A AMC Reynolds says, we use Twitter because a lot of local news agencies and personalities use it more frequently than Facebook. We want coverage for something we tweeted out too. Yeah, definitely. Like I just said, I mean, Facebook uh, moves a little bit slower than Twitter does. Um, you know, you'll see things right as they're happening. People are commenting them, um, commenting about it on Twitter. So it's a great tool to use for that. Definitely. So Colleen asks, do you have any tips for Twitter chats, creating or joining? So um. Guessing that you mean like uh, starting a conversation on Twitter. Um, and I would say uh, create your own hashtag. You can definitely do that. Um, you know, ask people to use the hashtag. So, you know, uh, you know, at, tell people to share something using the hashtag that you've created. Um, that's a great way to stay, start a conversation. Um, for joining, I think utilizing those hashtags too. Um, sometimes when there's big policy things in, in 
in the early childhood field too, um, organizations will start a hashtag. So, you know, um, or events too. So like, I know when there's conferences coming up, like we have a hashtag we use for leadership connections. Um, that'll help you join in on those conversations and really, um, you know, build that uh, communication with uh, other organizations. So, and Colleen, if, that, if you have any other questions related to that, feel free to put that in. Um, Dana asks, how do you balance scheduling on Twitter in advance and keeping relevant and engaging with other organizations? Yeah, so, um, hold on just a second. Yeah, because Twitter moves a little bit faster, um, that's definitely a challenge. However, um, I would say if you're not a news organization and you're not posting a ton of times per day, um, there's really no way <laughs> to see everything. Um, I mean, you can't be on Twitter all day on your phone or on your computer. It's just not possible um, unless that was your job. So um, I wouldn't worry too much. If you're posting on Twitter regularly like you are on Facebook and people are staying engaged, that's really what's important. Um, you know, you can look at Twitter every day um, and maybe like a few posts or tweet at some organizations or, you know, tag them and things if you want. But like every week or so, taking a look and just, you know, doing one or two things is really great to start. Um, it doesn't have to be like all the time type of thing, um, but you're going to want to check up on Twitter too and just make sure that there's no questions or things that you need to respond to immediately. Marilyn asks, um, we just played around with Buffer. Is there a way to post a one account, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Yeah, um, there is. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, when you go to Buffer, um, you'll see those little icons um, when you create a post. Um, and you just click those icons again and they will fade out. And that means that they're deselected, so it won't post on those things for you. Hopefully that answers that. Okay, great. Anybody else have any final questions about social media in general? Okay, well, um, I'm gonna, you know, wrap everything up. And I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys for attending this webinar. Um, you know, if you are interested in more, you know, marketing, um, you know, tips and things like this, um, please, you know, subscribe to our email list, follow us on social media. <laughs> um, like I said, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, we're also on YouTube. Um, although we don't post super often on YouTube, um, you can follow us there as well. Um, and we'll be posting when we have new events like this coming up. Um, also too, if you're coming to Leadership Connections this year, I'd love to see some of you guys and meet you in person at my session. Um, I believe it's on Friday. And um, if you, my colleague who's presenting with me, Patrick, did um, a webinar, I think it was the week before too, about websites. So. Um, if you were in that one as well, that'd be really cool too, um, to meet him in person. And I'd love to answer, you know, more of your questions and stuff. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys. Um, like I said, I recorded this webinar, so I'm going to try and put it up on the website, um, and email that up to all of you guys. And, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope that you guys can take these tips and use them to build your social media. So um, good luck to all of you. Thank you so much, Colleen. All right, have a great day, everybody. Uh, you're welcome, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, bye everybody.